Hi guys, today I've got Leah for a nail rebalance. She has four of those nails for three, three weeks. Uh, I have already removed the color from them and now I'm going just to do a normal prep uh, and fill them with the gel. After that we'll apply some purple so uh, you can start uh, watching and seeing how I'm doing the rebalance. So I push back the cuticles and then I will have to shape the nail and fill it with the gel so just shape the free edge and with any uh, remove any lifting if there is any actually her nails have been pretty good except two chips at the end so I don't have much of the filing for a prep. I'm basically etching the surface of the natural nail and then just reshaping it a little bit. I keep go doing that on all the nails. So this is obviously a video from the sound, so it will be kind of live things going on and happening and the people popping in the phone calls going on but you all know how it is so I'm just keep reshaping the nail Um, I can also show you a side view as well, um, especially on the index fingers. You want to file away from underneath uh, to kind of straighten the nail a little bit because they normally tend to grow down. Uh, so you don't want to overtake your side walls because then you get like a crooked kind of nail, uh, which doesn't look nice at all. This hand is almost done with the filing. So that's uh, this hand filed. I'm going to do exactly the same with the other one. So bear with me and we will come back with the gel, uh, the, the rest of the application. So after the shape is filed a little bit, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, removal of the dead uh, cuticle on the nail plate. Basically just removing any dead cuticles which are on the nail plate so we don't get any lifting. You can also do it with the cuticle pusher and then on the other side you've got like a wee knife just to scrape it away or file with your file. And then remove any dust which is on the nail plate. And using the blue scrap which is a nail dehydrator I'm going to dehydrate the nail plate so just dehydrate it well and then we will be applying a primer.
So my next step is a new prep, it's an extra dehydrator and I'm only really applying on the natural new. And then other thumb. I have to wait for it to dry a little bit and then once it's dry I can use the universal airborne. Again, just on the natural nail plate. And then let it dry. Uh, using the sculpting transparent pink on some nails I'm going to encapsulate the glitter and on the other I will just build the structure so we can apply the color later on. I'm picking up a very small amount of the product and I'm just applying a thin layer capping a free edge. I do exactly the same on the thumb. Then grabbing my messy brush, I'm going to do some glitter encapsulation and we're going into the purple, but I think also it will be pretty nice as well to get a little bit of the lighter glitter. So, so I'm just dabbing it at the free edge and then other free edge. And then we just applying on the top. And to make the glitter um, don't stick out too much, you just grab the sponge and then dab it in with the sponge just to perfect your encapsulation. And then nothing's uh, going to be a catchy. It is, will be also easier for you to apply the clear gel on top of that. So once the glitter encapsulation is done, I can apply the gel on the other fingers, nails, not the fingers, don't put the product on the skin. And make sure you're really capping those free edges just so the product doesn't lift. So the first layer just nicely rubbed it, it into the nail plate. Just rubbed it in and then pick up a little bit more of the product just to rebuild um, the apex which was there but now it grow down a little bit so you still want to keep those balance on the nails and I like to work one side other side and then drag the product down the way so doing one nail and then you can see it on another one And the last one. Obviously, the more you play with the product, the better results you will get because uh, you will have less filing. Okay, then this hand goes inside. And I can show you one more time the encapsulation of the glitter. So a nice and thin layer. If it is for a rebound, you can just add like a tiny, tiny bit more product at your apex and um, um, at the cuticle just so the glitter doesn't go directly on too close to the nail plate. So you don't have to file as much later on when you uh, when the clients come back for a rebalance. Quite often people ask me as well, like how often uh, you should get the new set. To be honest, like there is no need uh, of getting the new, um, new set. Of course, it is all depends on the length uh, of the nails you're wearing them. Uh, Leah wears kind of like medium length, like they're not too short, they're not too long. Um, and because of that, we don't need to kind of remove them and uh, do a new set because it is easy for me to sort out the shape uh, of the nails um, 
just with the file like I don't need to cut them down and just start all over again uh, it is a little bit different with those long stiletto nails or coffin nails um, sometimes yes they require a new set just because it's um, quite difficult to reshape them especially if they are like um, you know five centimeters long and uh, yes then you need to uh, sometimes start again just so they've got those nice and sharp look so dabbing in with the sponge so it's nice and even dabbing in with the sponge nice and even and then swap the hands so we can uh, apply a clear gel over it and I'm going to use the sculpting gel crystal one it's a really nice and thin consistency and I really like to work with the thin consistency gels because they kind of self level like this one you have to really work it out so I'm not necessarily a fan uh, of its structure like to me uh, it feels a little bit thick I quite like to just apply my gel and make the gel to work for me so nice and thin layer and then because there might be some tiny bits of the glitter left uh, I'm just doing it on the second finger and then I can clean my brush so this way I have removed any kind of loose glitter and I don't uh, I'm not going to put those glitter into my pot of the gel and then just build up the structure one side other side one side other side so this gel is much better consistency for me because it's kind of self level and uh, when working with quite watery uh, gels we need to take into the consideration the placement of the hand so if the thumb is going to lie in the lamp this way I have to put um, this way I have to put a little bit less product uh, on this side uh, because it will run into this side oh gosh I hope that's that make a sense so basically I'm applying more product here and less there because when she put this hand in this way the gel will just nicely self level into the right position rather than applying the same amount of the product and then it will run into the wrong side change so just exactly the same on this hand and basically after this part I have to nicely shape them so what I'm going to do is I will shape them all and I will just leave uh, couple nails for you to to see how I'm shaping them and what I'm looking and checking for and then we'll apply the color so here just uh, exactly the same like on the previous nails apply the clear gel Cool, change and now I can shape them so I remove the inhibition layer get away all my pots like make sure when you file you always take away all your pots gels and acrylics uh, away so it doesn't get uh, dust in it uh, any kind of dust in your products can cause the lifting as well put my fan on and then I'm shaping so um, when starting a shaping, I want to keep my side was nice and straight, so nice and straight. Then shape a little bit of the free edge. Work around the cuticle area. Make sure the product is nicely blend in. And then just even out a little bit at the free edge. Do the same on the other news. So on some of them I don't have really much of the filing. I will just need to buff them so they're nice and smooth. Nice and straight. I'm checking from underneath as well, like to make sure they uh, they go nice and straight. You can also help yourself as well checking the client side view, 
um, this way you will be more accurate with your shaping so I'm checking the length of the needles I tend to bend them too and compare the length of them uh, to make sure they are nice and uh, even consistent Uh, you can see also I'm trying to protect the client's uh, nail folds uh, from the cuttings because and hiding them kind of in between my fingers. Uh, for those who encapsulate the first time or first time see the gel, uh, the glitter encapsulation in a gel, uh, this is completely normal, like the glitter goes matte and then once we put the top coat it becomes nice and sparkly again. So straight side walls and you can see how much the shape is changing of the nail. By doing those lines uh, it also shows me where I should correct it at my free edge. then blend everything around the cuticle area nice and even and then go into the buffing so take a buffer and just buff the nails nice Two of them are buff. I'm just going to do it um, that on all of them and then we will start painting. So that's the nails buffed and now I can apply the color and that's the color Castaway Cream from Perfect Match. That's a nice purpley color because we are going to do some kind of mermaid style nails uh, with the shell. So I'm applying it on the nails. And then on top of that, we're going to put some mare mind powder and a shell. Well, this side doesn't like me. Okay, cure it. And then just the same on the other hand. Because the other hand didn't cure fully yet, I've got some time to put the top coat. And I'm going to do it on the pinky and you can see how nicely the glitter pops out. And on the thumb. Change. I've got the sunshine coming through the window, so I need to be careful so it doesn't cure my product. I'm going to do a good 
good application on the sides. Again, I have to twist the hand a little bit. And again, because my other hand actually did change. <laughs> so usually try to save the time, like if you have to wait for a curing, you could always do something extra. And I'm not worried that I didn't put the top coat on the other two nails because later on uh, we're going to do the shell design. So I will have plenty of time to put the top coat on the other two nails. As you can see, I'm a little bit struggling with this gel polish because it, was, uh, it wasn't used for a wee while. And I can see it. I didn't shake it at well before the application. So it's giving me a little bit of the hard time. If it would be on the natural nails, uh, that could cause the shrinkage of the product from the sides and that's what did on the extension a little bit. But on the natural nails it would be more visible. So if you didn't use like a, a color, say for maybe a week or two weeks time, make sure you kind of roll the bottle in between uh, your hands. I will show you that as well to don't create too many air bubbles. Change. So what you do is like you take a bottle and you kind of roll in between your uh, hands uh, to kind of mix the pigments well and this way you get a better coverage and it is not going to pull away especially on the natural nails when you apply it uh, the gel polish so this hand is cure and i can use the mermine powder and the one i'm going to use is the one from the indigo it's an uh, mermine effect because of my long nails, I'm just putting a tiny bit of the product on the lid and then dab it in first. So just dab it in, dab it in, and then wrap it into the dispersion layer. First, I kind of uh, slowly dabbing in, removing the excess of the powder. And then once I'm almost happy, I just clean my fingers and going to rub this in properly. So nicely rubbed in. Taking a brush, uh, make sure it's nice and gentle one. Actually, I've got a cool one too. I need to show you this one. <laughs> I got it as a wee crazy. Yeah, and that's a really cute one. <laughs> so, remove the excess of the pigment. So this one goes directly into the, the mermaid powder goes directly into the dispersion layer of the uh, inhibition layer from the gel polish. It doesn't need the dry top coat, but once we have done this step, I take a buffer, put your mermaid powder away and just touch the free edge to remove any excess of the powder, which is kind of not attached properly. And then later on, it could uh, make your top coat to pull away and you really don't want that. So now I can apply the top coat.
scrub the free edge so it looks really nice and shimmery and after we cure that we can start drawing the shell okay inside So just exactly the same, I'm rubbing the pigment on. Directly on the gel polish. You can see it at the free edge now you've got those tiny tiny wee bits of the pigment so you really want to touch that with the buffer because um, the gel sticks in only to either a rough or a sticky surface and because we have rubbed the pigment it's kind of um, make it too smooth to the top coat to adhere or also there might be some loose bits and pieces and that's when usually it can chip now i can apply the top coat And we can change the hands. So that's it nicely cured now. And, and now we are going to draw in some shell with the paint on frame gel. It's a really great gel with the um, little inhibition layer. So perfect for those type of designs. So starting drawing the shell, make a little dot in there, which will indicate you where all the lines are going to start and coming from and then just start painting these little lines So they are a little bit a uh, little bit curved and they are all starting from the same point so once i've got those lines uh, painted i can make it thicker at the bottom They are kind of almost like a wee triangle shape at the bottom. Uh, I had a wee blob of the product on the end. I'm using my thumb nail. I don't put the product on top directly on top of my skin because that could cause you an allergic reactions. Okay, the more time you spend with it, the, the better results you will get at the end, like with any kind of design. I'm missing one more at the top.
and now I can sprinkle it with the mermine powder. So what I'm using is my cuticle pusher, grab a tiny bit of product and, and then sprinkle. And what I like about uh, the paint on French uh, gel, as I mentioned before, you don't have to apply the top coat on it. <laughs> she will kick me under the table if I if I poke her one more time. <laughs> dab, 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 remove the excess. Um, and uh, then we apply the top coat also on the glittery nails as well. And now I can cure it. When curing those uh, type of designs, I always uh, do a double cure. So normally I would cure it for like a one minute, but I can cure it even for two minutes uh, just to make sure it doesn't come off. And here exactly the same. So just a small dot. And I show you from the opposite way um, how you can do it as well. So press harder and then you're pressing more gentle to your dot. Press harder and then more gentle to your dot. And now just add more product into it. But at the end you do really want to have those kind of triangle shape The more uh, closer to the cuticle you get, like go a bit smaller, you don't want it to be heavy then. So I'm going to clean my thumb and then sprinkle it with the glitter. Again, close all your products. Sprinkle, sprinkle, <laughs> then dab in her finger again. <laughs> no, I will be more gentle this time. <laughs> uh, perfect, change your hands. Um, once we've got this part done, I want to also put a tiny bit of the glitter in there. So I'm just removing the excess of the powder and you can see how nice um, effect it gives us. Uh, but of course this place doesn't look attractive at all uh, and we need to put some crystals in there. Uh, Leah doesn't want to have a crystal so I'm going to do a little um, liquid stone. And we will be using the same glitters we have used on the other fingers. So that's a purple. Um, I have no clue where I get the purple one from, but this one is an indigo and I think it's a pixel. Uh, no, a Cinderella effect. So I'm taking my uh, crystal one gel. My fine liner brush, uh, by the way, it's a really brilliant brush. Um, that's the fine liner from the New Perfect as well. And what I'm doing is I'm applying a tiny bit of this clear gel and then going with those little bits and pieces of the glitter. Actually, I can see it now. I need to go for something which is going to stand out more 
and it's not going to be as transparent so a rose gold will do mm -hmm. uh -huh, yeah we <laughs> like the rose gold <laughs> and again that's the one from the indigo i just got it uh, actually never used it yet so uh, it will be on virgin neil <laughs> <laughs> so i'm just Grabbing those glitter in. Mm -hmm. Change. I think actually this would look pretty nice on the nails as well, <laughs> yeah, like as a nail design, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I need to organize that too. <laughs> so again, tiny bit of the glitter. Change. And then we're picking up another scope of the clear glitter and we want to make like a stone out of it. Usually I find that the ones with a um, few different layers of different glitters looks the most interesting. So that's a liquid stone. You can see it, it looks like a crystal really with this difference uh, that is kind of feels much smoother change. And then I do exactly the same on the other one. And then cure this one too so i show you the finished results <coughs> i have to just clean the hands uh, and then use the white background i think it will look even much prettier uh, and i show you that on the white background so that's them finished and i'm just applying a little bit of the cuticle oil for the pictures uh, make sure you don't uh, overflow uh, the cuticles with the cuticle oil because it just doesn't look nice uh, at all so that's the finished look and um, Leah will just move them gently so you can see the blink on them as well. And I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. Uh, if you did, you can share so the other Neil Techs can see it as well and learn something, uh, something new. Thanks, guys. Bye. Actually, I wanted to finish the movie, but there I am back. <laughs> I am back and I'm taking a picture of uh, those nails. So this is going to take me ages because I'm always, always really fussy. But that's also a quick lesson for you uh, how to do the pictures. So I place this hand and I'm checking like which direction does it look nice. I've got white uh, piece of material like a fabric, uh, which I use for the background. And usually I find it on the white backgrounds is uh, our best. So now i want the hands to be in a kind of similar direction the nails so this is the wrong like the view you see it in a camera is wrong so her hands will need to go the camera will need to move there we are i've got a good angle now so that's a perfect angle for this set of the nails so i've got one hand ready and then the other one i wanted it to go somewhere here there we are so i check for background sometimes i need someone to help uh, to help for me or i do um use a pinching clamp and i clip it to the client uh, top they are always laughing oh my gosh but i don't like this one there we are that would be my perfect shot which is going to be only like uh, like this so that's a little tip for you as well how to uh, do a nice picture of the nails now it is bye time <laughs> bye